Coming up this week in IT, could a new framework based on Rust spell the end of slow and resource-intensive apps like Microsoft Teams that are based on Electron? I look at Tauroi and how in the future it could replace Electron to improve the end-user experience with many popular consumer and enterprise apps. Hi, I'm Russell Smith, Editorial Director of Petri.com. If you find this video useful, I'd really appreciate it if you gave it a like. And if you're interested in helping us shape the editorial future of Petri, what kind of content that we focus on, at the moment we have the Petri audience survey running for another couple of weeks. So we'd be really grateful if you'd go out and let us know what it is that you want to see more or maybe less of on Petri. We really want to understand what your problems are what it is that you want to see so that we can help you solve them. So if you'd like to help out with that, I'm going to put a link to the survey in the description for this video below, and we'd really appreciate your feedback on the site. So there's been a lot of talk about Rust in the last few weeks. I know that Paul has been writing about it. I mentioned it in one of these videos a couple of weeks ago. So the reason there's been a lot of chat about it is because it's what's known as a memory safe language. So programmers don't have to think about the memory protections and build them in themselves. It's all handled by Rust, but it also has comparable performance to something like C++. Now, Google announced uh, a couple of weeks ago that they were introducing some Rust APIs and elements to the Chromium project to help improve performance and security there. And I was also just reading a little bit more about this over the last few weeks, and I came across something that was quite interesting, uh, a relatively new framework on the scene called Tauri. Now, a lot of the apps that we use day to day in the enterprise and consumer apps, things like Slack and T Teams and Discord run on a framework called Electron. Now, if you use something like Teams, you'll have noticed that it's pretty slow and clunky, and it can be a real resource hog. And that's one of the problems with Electron. Now, the reason that programmers use Electron is because it makes it really easy for them to create cross-platform applications. So they just code once, and it can run on Windows, Mac OS, and Linux. So Electron allows programmers to use things like HTML, CSS, and JavaScript to code their application. Now, the problem with Electron is that because it needs to carry a complete uh, version of the Chromium source with it, that makes it really you know, intensive in terms of disk space and in terms of resource usage, because Chrome, of course, is a bit of a resource hog. And application frameworks like Tauri aim to bring the simplicity of something like Electron, but with closer performance to a native app. So Tauri is programmed in Rust and it comes in two components. So Rai is an engine that's quite similar to WebView, for instance, and it gives you the ability to create these cross-platform apps really easily with you know, HTML and JavaScript. And then there's Tau, which handles actually creating the windows and managing icons, maybe on the taskbar and in the system tray, things like that. So Tau and Rai, you put them together and you've got Tauri. Now, if you have the skills and the knowledge, you can use Tauri and you can create applications in Rust. Now, of course, there's a bit more of a learning curve to understand in Rust than HTML and JavaScript. Before we carry on, I wanted to give you a quick heads up about a new podcast that's been recently relaunched by Microsoft, Uncovering Hidden Risks. Microsoft and industry security experts dive into topics like data governance, internal and external threats, risk management and compliance, industry trends, and customer challenges. I recently listened to the first episode with the Microsoft Chief Information Security Officer, Brett Arsenault, transitioning to a holistic approach to data protection, and it's full of value. Brett lays out his three-step plan for how you might manage data protection in your organization. So it starts with really understanding your data set. That's crucial to being able to protect it. Then he says that you should identify the data crown rules and make sure they're protected first. And then you go on to manage the risk and compliance of your overall data set. 
Now, Brett goes on, of course, to elaborate on those three points to give you kind of actionable steps that you can actually put into practice in your organization right away. But this stuff is really complicated, of course. Many organizations are storing many, many terabytes of data, maybe even petabytes or whatever the next step up from that is. And it's complex. It's complex to be able to manage that data, to even know what data your organization has and to tier it and to understand, you know, how you're going to protect that data once you've identified it. This is really complex stuff. And if that's something that's in your remit, I'd really encourage you to check out the first episode and of course, subscribe to the podcast. There are already five episodes in the can and there's lots of fascinating guests and really useful information. So do check that out, Uncovering Hidden Risks, and I'll put a link to the podcast page and to the first episode in the video description below. And from what I've understood, there are a lot of similarities between programming an application in Tauroi and Electron. So the biggest advantages of using something like Tauroi over Electron is applications can be up to 44 times smaller with their disk footprint. They use about half the memory of an Electron app. So that means, you know, if you're working on a notebook, your battery is going to last longer. It also claims to be more secure. So just in general, you're going to have apps that are more responsive, that start up faster, that are not huge you know, resource hogs that limit the amount of other applications you can run on your device or drain your notebook's battery very quickly. And in general, it's just a more efficient use of system resources. Now, this, all, of course, all sounds great. And you might think, why aren't companies like you know, Slack and Microsoft ditching Electron right away and moving over to something like Tauri? Now, of course, there are several reasons for that. Now, Tauri is relatively new on the scene, so it's not quite as mature as Electron right now. So there are certain things that it can't do. But of course, as time goes by, it should hopefully reach feature parity with Electron. Electron is also very well established in the enterprise. You know, IT teams are used to rolling it out and managing Electron apps. It's just tried and tested. And of course, Tauri isn't in that position at the moment. So you might also be thinking, well, OK, we've got Electron and we've got Tauri, but what about WebView? So, of course, Microsoft released, I think it was last year, kind of July, something like that, released WebView 2, which is the component of Edge that's available on all Windows devices, or at least all supported Windows devices, that allows applications to access the features of Edge and, of course, therefore Chromium, uh, and package this very small, lightweight WebView component that allows the developer to use HTML, JavaScript to create their application and create these really small and lightweight apps. The only problem with something like WebView at the moment, as far as I understand, is that while in principle it might allow you to easily create cross-platform apps, it doesn't really have the same capabilities as something like Electron or Tauri does at the moment. So that might be why the client for Microsoft Teams is based on Electron and not WebView, and hopefully that will change in the future, we're still waiting for this kind of mythical Teams client 2.0. We have got kind of a cut down version of it in Windows 11 at the moment for the consumer versions of Teams. I don't know if it's anybody used that, I have no idea. <laughs> but we're still waiting for this kind of replacement for the Electron app that's going to be, uh, as far as I understood, a native app for Windows. But I'm not sure whether it's really going to be native or based on something like WebView. I'm not quite sure. We haven't even seen it in a public preview yet. So no idea how all of that works. Maybe you know something that I don't. Please let me know in the comments below. But that is one of the limitations of WebView, that it's not quite as complex or uh, feature rich as Electron. So nevertheless, uh, having said all of that, Tauri does look very promising. You know, I don't think it's necessarily something that can replace Electron right at this moment in time for all use cases. There may be complex applications like Teams and Visual Studio Code that are based on Electron. Maybe couldn't make that hop to Tauri right at the moment, but hopefully in the future, it's something that's going to happen, something that will make the end user experience much you know, faster, more responsive, and something that we all want to use because I know that we're a little bit fed up, as I, certainly I am, of the clunky team's performance and how much it drains my battery when I'm using a laptop, for instance. So if you're a developer, please let me know in the comments below what you think of Tauri, what you think of Electron maybe, and WebView and how all of these things compare and where you see the future of these things going. I'd really be interested to hear what your point of view is.
I'm also going to leave another video for you on the screen now about how artificial intelligence could completely transform the way that you do everything in the next version of Windows. And if you found this video useful, then please give it a like, leave a comment. If you want to see more like this, then do subscribe to the channel. But that's it from me for this week, and I'll see you next time.